Hi, I'm Jim Sowers from Sowers Knife and Tool and Make Stuff With Your Hands. This is a video about how I form a bottle opener from a three quarter inch bolt. Thanks for watching. I'm using a little propane furnace, uh, Atlas Forge makes this and I really like it because it lights up and gets hot really fast. I can usually get to a forging temperature in six or eight minutes for small stuff. I've been really happy with this forge. I start out with a three quarter inch bowl that I've soaked in vinegar to get all of the zinc off of and I cut off the head on my chop saw to begin. Once the forge is hot enough to get going and the bolt head is cut off, I put the head in and let it get to a good yellow heat. I mark on the anvil the depth that I want to set the first shelf on the bolt. Um, I, I'm going with a three quarter inch shaft bolt. I'm usually going in about an inch and an eighth, an inch and an eighth, and that gives me about a cube of material. You can see I'm using my big hammer. That's a five pounder from Brent Bailey. That really helps me get the down set immediate. I start with half on, half off blows. So I'm hitting the bolt about halfway onto the anvil and halfway off. And it makes a nice shelf that'll become the opener portion of the, of the bottle opener. I take a small drift about 3 16 and I start from one side and I'm gonna, you'll see I hit it once and then I check to make sure my mark's right in the center where I want it to be. Sometimes I can do that in one heat, but I've never fiddled around with the cameras before, so this was something new, and I had to go back for another heat to finish off. So, I finish punching the hole most of the way through until you can feel more resistance. You can tell when you get to the bottom of the punch. I'm going to turn it over after a couple more hits, and you'll see I, I dress the face a little bit, and that makes the dark spot show up where the punch is going through, so it's easy for me to line it up to punch through the other side of the hole and get it just right. There I'm over the Pritchell hole. And I'll just go ahead and knock out the slug. Now I'm gonna dress the face. Every time that you drip the hole a little open, it drags a little material down through the opener out the bottom. And so you have to turn it over and dress the face after every time you do your drifting. I've got the hole opened up just enough now that I can use my big drift to go ahead and get it opened up big enough that I can finish it on the horn of the anvil. An important thing in this part, after you hit it five or six times, you'll start to see that the opener goes black around the hole where you're drifting. You need to stop at that point and not keep hammering or you'll crack it. But once you take the drift out, there's enough mass. If you wait a second, the heat will move back into that area and you can also turn it over and you can dress the face again on that. Here I'm just finishing the drifting. I like to get the hole up to, oh, about an inch or so before I move to the horn. Here you see I'm dressing the face again because the drift has pulled the metal face down through and you have to keep it flat and clean before each heat or else you'll get a mess and you'll get cold shuts and you'll get cracks. Now I'm moving out to the horn of the anvil and you'll see I try to go kind of evenly around and this will open the opener up the rest of the way to about one full inch when I'm done. And moving in a circle around helps keep it the right shape inside. I start out hitting flat on the material. In these couple passes, I'm just hitting flat. I'm just getting the outside width correct and I'm stretching thing, everything out. And there you see I'm dressing the face, always dressing the face to keep the cracks out. 
after this pass, you'll see I'll come back on the horn of the anvil and I'll hit the edges at about 45 degrees instead of square on. And that will give it kind of a more pleasant shape. And I do it both sides and I find that when I'm doing that pass at 45 degrees, it really rounds things up. Here we go. You can see I'm hitting softer and at about a 45 degree angle to the square face of the opener. That really rounds it up and gives it a good shape and it makes it softer in your hand so you don't cut or scratch your hand when you're using the opener later. There, the opener is about the right size now and it's ready for me to put the whittle tab on. Here I'm dressing the face before I start anything else just to get it clean and true. Now you can see the size is about right and I'll come down from the top and very gently trying to stay even on the two sides you see me looking. I'm trying to get it to that kind of nice triangle or oval shape that makes a nice looking opener. This is my stamp. I believe I got it from Buckeye Engraving. I always check. I've stamped things upside down and backwards. So I always try to check and get it laid, everything laid on the anvil, just in the right place before it comes out hot, because you don't have much time at the right temperature with this to get it just in place. I've got it set just right, and I try my best to get it in one hit. I find if I have to go more than one hit, I often get skips and I don't get a good stamp. That's kind of a ball nose punch. It's smooth around the edges. It's not square and sharp. It's not for drifting a hole through. It's for starting the first mark where the tab for the opener will be, the little tongue. I'm gonna get everything good and clean. I don't want any scale in there when I'm trying to get this in just the right place. I'm dropping things, I'm always dropping things. and I'll make one mark and I'll check it and make sure it's just right before I set it deeper. You can adjust a little bit. If you get that mark off, just reset it a little bit over the edge of your previous mark and you can get it in the right place. Once I have the mark with the small punch really set well and I know it's right in the center where I want it and it looks good, I go to a little bit larger of a ball end punch. This is kind of the shape I've been using lately. I like how it looks when it comes out. I like the little round nose. And I'm just going to go ahead and set it. That's the five pound hammer still. I'm going to work it for a little bit and then I'll come back with a lighter hammer and I'll planish it to smooth it out so there aren't individual hammer marks in there. Just makes it look a little cleaner, a little bit nicer. There it is, and the tab is done. I'm checking on the inside. I like about three quarters of an inch from the tongue to the outside of the opening. I find that that almost always works just right on a bottle. Here's the end. I'll heat both ends of the bolt once really well. If it's a long bolt or the whole thing at one time, just try to even out the color and I'll bring it out and just brush it really well, get it good and clean. This isn't the usual wax that I use. I often use beeswax mixed with turpentine, but I was out of that. And so I got some furniture paste wax at the hardware store. I put a little coat of wax on after the good brushing and that just makes the color look good and it makes it a little bit more waterproof. In case you spill your root beer on it, it won't rust.
there it is. It's all waxed and ready to go. It just needs to cool down a bit.